All right, today we're gonna be making Pokemon Stadium with polymer clay. Also, this video is a special occasion because it's a big hawkin' collaboration between me and several other YouTubers. Those being Carabix, Addis Adler, Clumsy Thumbs, and Crafts Infinity and beyond. This collaboration was Pokeball themed, so everyone made creations relating to a Pokeball in some form. All of their channels are linked in the description. Anyway, let's get into it. So we're gonna start by making the center of the stage, which is the area where the players fight on. It's also probably the most detailed part of the stage. We're just gonna start with a simple flat rectangle and then build the detail up as we go. So my favorite part about this stage is how in the game, it literally transforms and shapeshifts into different landscapes. And each transformation represented a different element. You had a fire transformation, which had this like burning house. You had a rock transformation, which had a bunch of canyon stuff. You had a grass transformation and a water transformation. So I just finished reconnecting the corner pieces to make them look like they're sticking out a little bit, like they do in the actual game. Now I'm making the Pokemon ball that's gonna be at the center of the stage. I did this by making a white circle and a red circle. Then I cut the circles in half and put the two halves together to form the Pokemon ball. Now I'm inserting some chopped up bits of paper clip, which are going to be used to hold up the floating platforms. Now I'm using a black sharpie to draw on a lot of the details. This is also one of those creations where I baked it in stages as I went along, as opposed to baking it all at once. It's also best to use sharpie on it after it's been baked. Because if you try to use Sharpie on it when it hasn't been baked, it usually comes out all like smeared looking and just not that great. Now back to the transformations. So the water transformation was always my favorite. It was the one that had the windmill and all the little bubbles floating around. And I don't know if it was just me, but it felt like the water transformation was the one that happened the least often. Like out of the four transformations, it was the one that occurred the least. Now we're ready to make the two floating platforms. Now this might seem like a dumb point I'm about to make, but have you ever noticed in video games just how common it is for there to be floating platforms like literally everywhere but without explanation? And again, I know it sounds like a silly point, but just the fact that it's so normalized to have all these mysterious floating platforms in video games, I don't know, it's, it's just something that I found noteworthy. So as you can see, I have the ceramic piece, which I was originally going to use as filler, but the clay wasn't sticking to it and it just wasn't working out very very well, so I disposed of it. Be gone, thought. Now we're gonna create the audience. So one of my favorite parts of the stage as a kid were the city buildings in the background. I remember one of them had a sign on it that was really hard to read. Another building had a poster on it, but it was like really blurry. And this leads me to another great thing about the stage, which is just how many layers and details there were to the background. Like not only did you have the city buildings outside of the arena, but behind that you had a big mountain range, and then even further in the distance you had the fireworks going off. It might not seem like a big deal, but it is always nice to feel like game developers are putting in the extra details into the backdrop, especially considering that this is the GameCube era. Alright, now that we got the basic shape of the arena down, we're going to start working on the audience itself. And for that we're just going to use a strip of grayish green clay. Now we're just going to use a thin strip of gray clay to create the border around the audience. So there's something about Pokemon stages that I noticed in the Smash Bros games. In the very first Smash Bros game, we had Saffron City, which was a specific location in the Pokemon world. But after that, I feel like the Pokemon stages got a little too non-specific and kind of generic. Like then they had Pokemon Stadium, then they had Pokemon Stadium 2. I don't know, I feel like they started relying too much on the generic stadium themed levels for Pokemon, as opposed to having more specific locations from the actual Pokemon world. Anyway, right now we're finishing up the giant screen that's behind the players. And once again, we're using a black sharpie to get in all those little details. I also like how in the actual game, what's displayed on the screen is always changing. Like sometimes it shows a close-up of the players, sometimes it shows the score, almost like an actual sporting event. And now for the very last detail. We're gonna use this sharpie to make a bunch of little tiny dots to represent the actual audience members. And after that's done, we're all finished with Pokemon Stadium. 
Make sure you give this video a like if you liked it, comment if you want, subscribe for more content. Also, don't forget to check out the channels of everyone else who participated in the collaboration, all linked in the description. And that's all for now. Peace.